Hello and welcome to this neat video tutorial in which we're going to start talking about adjusting the filter settings inside of neat video. And I should say right at the start that the workflow is going to be exactly the same regardless of the application you are using neat video reduce noise for in. So it can be Fusion, Nuke, Media Composer, Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, whatever it is, the workflow is going to be exactly the same. I happen to be using Adobe After Effects and I've already applied neat video. Now, if you are not familiar with the Neat Video workflow, can I suggest you go back to the website and start off with the basic workflow so that you get an idea of, of the basics of Neat Video. And then if you want to understand how to build a, a stronger and a better profile, you can go back and look at the Building a Noise Profile tutorial. And once you've had a look at those, then that's the point to come back to this tutorial on adjusting the filter settings to get a real feel for how they work. So I'm going to open it up by clicking the Prepare Noise Profile button and it opens up and I'm going to make it full screen in After Effects, in fact in Windows but just by dragging it up to the top and we're looking at the pre-filtered, we're going to go to the Noise Filter Settings tab, we can see the filtered version because as I say I've already built a noise profile and I'm going to zoom in with my middle mouse wheel just to see the image more clearly and I ought to point out by the way there is a little navigator just down here, by default it's at the bottom left hand corner and if you click on that you can see where you are on the image and you can actually physically move it around down here and zoom in and out actually down here if you want to and move around so depending on what you want to see and what you want to do you can actually zoom in and out actually in this little navigator if it's easy if you want to move it tools navigator you can go to the top bottom and f8 shows and hides okay just so you're aware of that so now we're inside of the noise filter settings we're going to start talking about these two tabs here, the temporal settings and the spatial settings. They are two separate filters, both of which are applied by default. So both are on. You can see that this one's enabled. And if I go to spatial, you can see that spatial is enabled and they have default settings. I should also point out that if you go to the tools menu over here again, I'm actually in standard mode. There is an advanced mode, which we'll pop to a bit later on. But I'm in standard mode, which is usually all you need unless you've got a real tricky situation. So to be able to see the way these two filters work, we're going to look at one and then we're going to look at the other. And to do that, I'm going to turn off the spatial filter. So you'll see that you've actually got the enable switch here. So if I disable it, I instantly get these two triangles here telling me that I can reset this setting by clicking them. So if you want to know if something is at non-standard, it's not at the default settings, you will get these little triangles ready to, to click and reset the settings. So it's a good indication that something has been changed from standard. Now I'm going to leave that off and go to the temporal settings and just talk about temporal noise and the way that it's actually dealt with inside of Neat Video. So Neat Video is looking for changes over time. Things that are not features but flashing in and out because of, for example, a bad gain setting on your camera. And the way that it does it is by analysing frames before and after the current frame. And that can be seen down here in the actual interface where you've got the current frame in blue and then two before are orange and two after are orange. It's saying that it is comparing this frame with two frames before and two frames after, in other words, five frames altogether, to work out what is noise flashing in and out. And you can see that the radius up here is set at two, so that we know that it's two frames. Now, the more you increase this, particularly for noisy clips, the better results you're going to get. Now, if it's not very noisy, it's just got a little bit of noise, you're going to find two is just fine. You don't need to do any more. But with a particularly noisy clip, and if I just click on this one, the original, you can see this is very noisy indeed. You're going to find that the more you increase this, the better the results are going to be. So I'm going to go up to five, which is the maximum. You can see down here, that's five frames before the present frame and five frames after. And you can see that the, the noise is significantly less. And if I just reset this back to two and you watch the screen you'll see the difference it's made so that's two if i take it back up to five you can see that it has made a significant difference however you need to be careful because when you get to five there's a couple of potential problems that can take place one is a slight render hit because it's doing more work it's actually analyzing 11 frames the five before the present frame and then the five after so it's doing more work, which means it could slow things down a little bit. But you can also get a slightly unrealistic look, and it can sometimes eliminate details. So particularly in fast-moving images and things, you can actually lose things. Maybe you'll lose some of the wire details. So you need to be careful, and if you think you're losing detail, 
you then need to, to, to pull this back. Often the best way is try five, click apply, go back to your application and just play through a few frames. Play through and see if all the details that are important are still visible or if they've been got rid of. But if they have been got rid of, then you're going to have to come back, pull back on this a little bit. And when you pull back on this a little bit, say these lines, these wires start to appear more, then you can go into the spatial settings to apply filtering in a different way to try and maintain the important detail but still deal with the noise. So at this point, I would now go across to the spatial settings. And on the spatial settings, I'm going to enable them. You could just click this button or just click enable. That's the default settings. And I have, in standard mode, two sliders. Now, the one that you will use the most is going to be the bottom one, which is the, the noise reduction amount. And it, notice it, it talks about it being under the luminance channel. And very briefly, the reason it's talking about luminance and it's not talking about chrominance or colour is that the human eye is so designed that changes in luminance, particularly changes in, in, in the darks, the human eye is particularly aware of. So if you over filter the luminance channel, your eye will really pick it up very quickly. However, changes in the chrominance or the color channels is far, far less. Your eye notices nothing like as much as changes in luminance. So because of this, the default setting is set at 40%. And if I start to pull this up, so this is the amount of filtering that takes place, okay? So when I pull this slider up, it's going to filter more and more of what it considers to be noise. And that noise was defined by the original noise profile you created. Okay, so it's looking at your noise profile. It's looking at what is considered noise you define in your noise profile. This then reduces that visible noise, and that's 100%. And you can see, Although that's not bad, it certainly got rid of the noise. It's now quite quite unrealistic, possibly slightly ethereal or plastic looking. So it's not really going to be the best result to get rid of noise in this particular example. So that's the noise reduction amount. I'm going to reset that to 40 at the moment. The noise level above it here is what is defined as noise. Now, it's set at zero. In other words, it's looked at your noise profile and said, that is noise. Therefore, that is my baseline, that is my zero point. Your noise profile may be inaccurate. You don't know at the moment. It might be inaccurate, it might be very accurate. There's a way of checking that out by playing with the noise level amount. And if we decrease it, we're taking what we consider to be noise out of the profile and, and it'll start to appear back on the screen. If we increase it, we're bringing more items into our noise profile. We're increasing, if you like, uh, the, the, the range of what it considers to be noise which is then affected by the noise reduction amount. So whatever your noise profile was, your noise profile is defined by the noise profile you created. At the moment, it's reduced by 40%. We can obviously increase that, 40, 50, 60, 70, whatever, and reduce that amount. But if you want to see how accurate your noise profile is, what you can do is take your noise reduction amount all the way up to 100%, and then start pulling down the noise level until you start to see the noise appear. So I'm going to pull the slider down, and you can see at the moment we can see the noise, the filtered look, and I'm going to start to pull it down to minus 50%. You can clearly see there's a lot of noise that's come back in, minus 55%. So what I want to do now is start to slowly pull the slider back up, and still the noise starts to disappear. And the key is, when you get back to zero, if you can still see noise, bearing in mind that our noise reduction amount is at 100%, if you get the noise level back to zero and you can still see noise, it tells you that your noise profile isn't completely accurate and you might need to pull the noise level up somewhat. So I'm going to pull this up to minus 15, minus 10, minus 5. There's still some in there. Zero. Okay, I'm now going to go above and see if that makes any difference. If I go a little bit above, 15%, 10%, possibly that's made a difference. Now, obviously, you can just click the reset button to make it, to have a look. Reset. It, it's not made a massive difference in my particular example, but I could take it up if I wanted to increase what's considered to be noise. Now, what you do, however, at this point is you reset luminance. So reset luminance to 40%. Okay, so you don't leave luminance at 100% because it does end up making this image look very flat. However, you might still want to increase the luminance amount somewhat to get a better end result. So this is the amount of noise reduction that you're doing. This is what is considered as noise, and I've actually added 10% to my noise profile. Now, 
Not only do you have this standard control, you also have the ability to go to the advanced controls under the tools menu over here. You can go to the advanced mode. And when you go to the advanced mode, you can actually look at noise level and you can look at noise reduction amount in specific channels. Okay, now these specific channels include luminance and then the two color channels, CR and CB, because the workspace that the video works in is the YCRCB workspace. Y standing for luminance, CRCB are the two color channels. And you can see here that, again, these are all set to zero, apart from the one that I've been playing with. In fact, I'm going to reset this at the moment. So they're all set at zero. And let's choose luminance and reset that at the moment. So everything is at zero, which means it's based on the noise profile you originally created. However, luminance is at 40%, but notice the chrominance channels are set at 100%. Because you don't notice noise, particularly in the chrominance channels, in the color channels, we can afford to say, right, let, let's, let's look at 100% reduction of whatever we have defined as noise. So we've defined noise here, but we can actually increase these if we feel we need to. How can I see or make a choice and a judgment on this? Well, all the way down here at the bottom, you've got a little item that says normal. And if you click on there, you've actually got the ability to view all of these things in a different way. You have the ability to look at luminance and the two chrominance channels. And I'll click on that one, and so we'll see that we've got the filtered result. You see it says Y, which stands for luminance, and the CR channel and the CB channel. And we can see where the noise is. So I can see, actually, just looking at this, the CR and CB channels look really clean. Notice that the noise is all in the Y channel. Okay, so what I might actually want to do at this stage is go and look at just the frequencies in the Y channel. When I look at the frequencies in the Y channel, I can look at high frequency. You notice you've got high, mid, and low. So high frequency, in other words, small detail, median detail, and low detail. And we can see where the noise is in this particular channel. Now, you can click on them to look at pre the, the pre-filtered version and the filtered version. Click and see the original so I can now make those choices as to what I want to filter out. So I might say, for example, that I think I've still got quite a big problem in the high frequencies. High frequencies, I think, are probably more visible than anything else. So I can go to high and sort of say, okay, let's look at increasing what is defined as high frequency noise in the profile that we've made. And I start to pull that up. I can start to increase what's considered to be noise in just the high frequencies. So you can see before and after. So bear in mind that that's already at 100%. So as I start to pull this up, it's going to bring more and more into the profile that I've created. Let's also look at the color channels very briefly. So I'm going to look at the CR channel. And we can see, again, just clicking, you can see before and after. You can see that there's a little bit of visible noise, I think, in the, in the lower frequencies more than the higher frequencies. So I might say, okay, there's a little bit I want to just, just increase a little bit in the CR channel a little bit more that's a, that's, that's a little bit smooth that should make quite a bit difference and then we could go so okay let's look at the cb and the cb again as a little bit noise it's not too bad actually often that's quite a noisy channel i'm just going to pull up a little bit perhaps in the cb as well so 15 percent in both of those so i've brought a bit more of what is considered noise into those channels Notice that they're already already being filtered by 100%. I've not increased the luminance overall. I can, as we've seen before, go back to the luminance channel and say, do I want to increase the luminance reduction amount a little bit? So it's 45, 50%, 60%. Okay, when you start getting to these figures, you're going to possibly end up with smoothing. Now, at this point, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the normal view and look at the filtered end result. Remember, you can click on it to see before and after. And you can turn around and say, well, how realistic does that look? Is that good? Is that bad? How do I want to move forward from here? Am I happy with this end result or do I want to do something else? What I might want to do, in fact, I'm just going to move this one down to 50% or 50, 50, yeah, say 50% at the moment. What I might want to do at this point is say, do you know what? I've made these adjustments, but um, I, I'm not sure. I think these are good, but I want to experiment. Now, to experiment, you do this. You go from variant one, you click this plus button. If I just right click on it, you'll see that by default, when I click that plus button, it's going to give me a duplicate of what I presently have. 
So I'm going to click the plus button and I get variant 2. Variant 2 uses exactly the same settings. So variant 1 and variant 2, just click between them, look exactly the same. On variant 2, what I can do is now add sharpening. And I'm going to click the sharpening button and I'm going to open up sharpening. Sharpening is now on. And you'll see that it's already got 100% sharpening on fine detail. Now, enable it and disable it to see before and after. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom into this item here. And I'm going to just navigate a little bit better with it here so you can see some wires and windows, something like that. Okay. And I'm going to disable sharpening and re-enable sharpening. It's made a tiny bit of difference. But what I want to do is I pull up the high frequency. So I'm going to pull up the high frequency noise up to say 200%. So you can see what a difference that's made. So that's 200%. Turn it on and off just to see before and after, see what difference it's made. Certainly has made some difference around here. Okay, so now we've done that. Let's also pull up the medium noise. Let's pull that up to say sharpen that up to about 100%. And again, we can turn it on and off to have a look before. And after you can see what a massive difference that's made. And we can pull up the low frequency as well. We can start to pull that up and see if that makes a difference. Again, that is making quite a bit of difference. And I'm going to, again, turn that, enable that before and after. Before and after, that's made a huge difference. I might turn that down a bit. The query or the thing that you need to be very careful about is not over sharpening. Often we say with sharpening, the best thing to do is to sharpen. And then when you think it looks about right, pull it down a bit because it, it's possible to over sharpen. Please note that there is a, a, an extra filter setting here. It says prevent over sharpening and that is on by default. And you do have access to the channels, which we're not going to go through here, but you can enable sharpening in the CR and CB channels as well. But we're not going to, to deal with those in this particular tutorial. But we've enabled sharpening. Now, sharpening is in variant two. So at the moment, we're looking at it by switching on and off here. And of course, we do want to then zoom out to full screen pretty much. And we can enable it on and off here. Or alternatively, we can switch between the two variants. Now, we've got variant one and variant two. The obvious thing is to click variant one and then click variant two. But that means you have to look away. And it's not quick to be able to sort it out. And I can see haloing problems. So I can see that I will need to pull my filter down at some stage. But another way of doing it is actually just to right click on the non-selected variants. If I right click on variant one, temporarily selects it and let go. So I can just keep my eye on the preview all the time as I'm clicking between the two. Or alternatively, left click on the one that's selected. So if I left click on variant two, it goes to variant one and just switches between the two as I'm just clicking between them. So different ways of seeing it. However, you would need to get in there and I would need to pull my sharpening down. I certainly think that that's definitely overdone it somewhat. And uh, then you play around with it. However, once you've got your sharpening to the right point where it's not creating halos and you're happy with the way it looks, then all you simply need to do is click apply. And you've applied a well filtered, well sharpened end result in whatever application you're working in. I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you very much for watching.